Good morning. I am just really curious as to who wakes up this early on a Sunday because I need all the help waking up this morning. And I have to do hair and makeup, so figured I'd hop on and see. I'm just curious. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Oh, thank you for the wave. My eyes cannot open yet. <laughs> Good morning. It's where are you in the world that you're awake? Is it just like really, really early or what's happening? Ooh. 5 a.m. workout. Good for you. Hey, Charlotte. No, I love Charlotte. Okay, so this is going to be... It's going to be interesting. I have an early uh, call time for filming, which means I have to consider travel time, plus I have to do this. I can't show up just that on like this. But I do have my Starbucks. That's gonna help. Toronto, Maine. Wow, good morning, Barbara. Rise and grind, girlfriend. <laughs> okay, yes. Besides coffee, what do y'all do to wake up when you're struggling, when you're on the struggle bus? this early in the morning. Any tips? Any tips at all? Oh, miss you too, Barbara. Wow. She gets up at, he or she, she gets up at 3.15 a.m. most days for a four mile run during the week. That's amazing. Oh yeah, take my dogs outside and wait with them. The cold weather wakes me up. Yep, that makes sense. Play some music. I will be doing that after this. Exercise and shower, take a walk. Adderall. <laughs> Jumping jacks. Oh, that's true, I need that. I need to do all that, but right now, I just need to stand up straight. That's all I can do right now is stand up. Good morning, everyone. What is that? Oh. oh my gosh. Wow, this looks really yellow. <laughs> That's not just my eyes, right? <laughs> oh, if I sit down, I will totally fall asleep. I am up early because I have an early call time for filming for those who are asking. Um, oh, thanks guys. <laughs> Look at this. I'm going from pink to yellow, but I promise it won't look like this on screen. <laughs> Okay, so it wasn't just me. It wasn't just my morning eyes. Oh. Yes, filming can be done sitting. That's true, but if I sit down, I mean, I get up. I'm good. I'm good. I can stand. Good morning, all of you. I can't believe there's so many people up this morning on this, uh, on this early on a Sunday. It's not my birthday. Maybe it's your birthday, but it's not mine. And it's not till December. Blinding is working. I don't know what that means. Oh, blending. Sorry, yeah. I gotcha, I gotcha. Yeah, it's working. And it ends up matching my body. Cause I, I spray tan. So, uh, and I wash my face a lot more often than my body throughout the day, especially because I'm trying to take off makeup most days. 
and then I put it back on for like whatever I'm doing in the evening. A lot of face washing happening on. Yeah. Let's see if this, what this lighting does. Let's see, it's actually kind of similar to my body. <laughs> I know, it's, a, it's an odd shade right now, but I promise. It'll all even out. Yeah, in, in person it looks better. Oh. Yes, um, so I'm filming a lot right now. A lot. Um, most days. And then I see clients um, usually on the mornings that I'm not filming. And then also, like now, I'm seeing clients virtually, like after hours and on the weekends that I'm not filming. So basically, when I'm not filming, I'm seeing clients. Um, no, I don't have tattooed eyeliner. That's probably left over from last night. <laughs> Maybe I didn't clean it well enough, sorry. Um, so yeah, so I'm... And then, other than that, I'm working out. I'm proud of myself. I'm starting to work out again. I, I just needed it. I couldn't, I couldn't, I can't do it at home. Anybody work out at home? I just, I couldn't. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I do look very gold right now. I promise it's gonna even out. You can't tell, but it's I'm the same color as my neck and body, and I still have a lot more to do. So, look, my eyes are starting to open a little bit. Thank you. This is because I'm interacting with y'all. So thanks. I appreciate it. Appreciate the help. Working out is for suckers. So yeah, that's amazing. Yes, filming for New Orleans has uh, completed for, for, for me. Couldn't even get the words out. Okay, I'm, I'm still waking up. So what are y'all doing up so early? Are you just, um, just early risers to begin with? Or do you have to be somewhere this morning? It's happening. I was just in bed scrolling through your phones and saw that I was live. Good morning. So the way that I got involved with MAPS, um, I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, and I'm also a certified sex therapist. And um, I have a private practice in Houston called Houston Relationship Therapy. And we have offices in Houston proper and then also in an outlying suburb called Katy. And we focus on relationship and um, premarital counseling and sex therapy. And I've been doing that, I've been seeing clients since like 2003. I've been in private practice, I want to say since like 2007-ish. And I have an amazing team that works for me and with me and they're awesome. Um, but I was getting a lot of, um, I was getting a lot of requests from local Houston media to, to like come on and talk about different topics, you know, that were happening in the news or they're just trying to educate their viewers on stuff. So I was doing a lot of live TV things and that started like in 2015 or so, maybe earlier. I can't remember, but, um, I really enjoy it and it was fun. And I was one of those people that like didn't get nervous and I look forward to it and all that good stuff. So then finally, um, like in 20, what was it? 
20, like 16, 20, around 2015, 2016, when I was doing a lot of live stuff, um, I got contacted by a production company, not the one for Mass, and they were like, hey, we're putting, we're trying to put this show together, um, we found you online, we've seen your YouTube channel, we've seen what you do, and we want you to, um, help us pitch this, these show ideas. So over the course of the next year, I was speaking with that production company, trying to get them to, um, to get some um, shows sold. And then nothing happened with that production company. So then a, another production co company contacted me, not the one from Apps, and they were like, hey, we need, you know, an expert like you to help us sell a sh show, will you help us? And I was like, sure. Nothing came of that. And then it wasn't, it was 2017 that I was like, you know what? Nothing's coming from these other shows, these other production companies. I need to maybe contact, like if I really wanna do this, cause at this point I'm like getting my hopes up that hey, something could come of it. And maybe they are seeing something in me and maybe I should try to do something on TV. Um, even though I've never done it, nor had I ever like thought that I would. So then finally I was like, let me contact a company that already has some reality relationship shows on the air that don't need to really sell anything. They already have it. And so I started looking around and I noticed that Kinetic Content had at the time like three or four relationship related shows all over, probably more, but that's what I remember. And I, I uh, asked, I, I can't, I'm sorry. <laughs> I am, let me take another sip. Okay. So I reached out to them, to their casting department, sent them my curriculum vitae that said everything that I'd done, everything that had to do with my practice, everything that had to do with like my schooling. I had my doctorate in marriage and family therapy. I had my master's in marriage and family therapy. I had my bachelor's in psychology. I had my certification as a sex therapist. And, um, and I was like, here are some clips of things that I've done on live TV. If you ever need an expert or you're interested in talking to me, please reach out. The next day, the next morning, they reached out. And um, they're like, hey, we totally want to talk to you. Can you do a Skype this week? And I was like, sure. So... That was 2017. And then it wasn't until, oh, I kind of forced myself on them. Um, after that, I was like, okay. So we would do Skypes for different shows. Again, trying to get, these are for new ones because there were no openings at the time on mass. And so I was just helping them, again, do the same thing that I was trying to do with the other ones, but uh, but the other thing was that I, I had to go and do like a lecture series in California. And I was like, you know what? While I'm there, I'm going to go meet these people in person because I've been talking to them, you know. Good morning, Melissa. I can't believe you're awake. You don't have to be. <laughs> so I, um, I went out to California. I met them for coffee at their offices. And no joke, as we're talking, and they're like, oh, it feels like we've known you because we've seen each other on Skype, and at the time, that's all it was. It, um, they, there was a double rainbow behind us, like, double rainbow. And we just kind of were like, okay, this, gotta, this has got to mean something. Um, and then they were filming in Dallas for whatever season that was. Well, I'm in Houston. I mean, that's where I'm from. That's where I live. That's where my family is. So I was like, hey, 
Um, since y'all are going to be there, I'd love to meet kind of the higher ups who are going to be on location. Will you, um, can I come up for a quick like one hour happy hour, get together, whatever, I don't know, just a meeting. And, and they were like, yeah, sure. So my cousins, two of my cousins and I, we did like a little road trip up to Dallas from Houston, met with them for like an hour and a half, came back the next day. And then it wasn't until 2018, the end of 2018, that there was a vacancy to fill and uh, on Married at First Sight, and I was available, and they put me up for it because they had met me. They they felt at that point like they knew me. And any time that somebody can feel like they know you, especially if, if it's gonna be for something long-term like math, uh, you, you definitely have a leg up. So it, it was just really great, um, and Lifetime agreed, and. Here I am, four seasons in. It's insane. Feels like um, feels like it couldn't possibly be four seasons already. But yeah, filming the fourth season, which is super exciting. Ah, oh, now we feel like we know you. Yeah, well, I mean, we kind of do, especially if you're on my Instagram. Definitely a little bit different than on TV, right? <laughs> yeah. So what's y'all's favorite part about the show? Like, what do you love about it? If you even watch it. Which, come on, you gotta watch it. What's your favorite part? I'll tell you mine. Um, my favorite part about the show is, first of all, I love surprises, so, um, and I'm a little bit of like a, a little bit of a control freak, or I'm just very opinionated, I don't know, I don't know. Mm. So when we match our couples, I cannot wait to find out if they like each other. Like, oh yes, yes, when the couple see each other for the first time, exactly, like, we're freaking out. So all three of us experts are, of course, on a text thread, who isn't? And when it's wedding times, we're all, like, very, very nervous <laughs> and just waiting um, to get all the pictures in and to see how they're doing and reports back about how they, you know, what their first look was like, and do they seem to be getting along. Good morning, Angel. So it, um, that's definitely my favorite time, is to see like, okay, are they hitting it off? Did they like each other? That's really, really exciting. My favorite part is when they work out. I love to see them staying together at the end. Yes, of course, that's, that's what we all want. Like, we all want them to figure out how to be happily together, for sure. Sometimes they can do it on their own, sometimes they need help, and sometimes they figure out that it just can't happen. Also seeing individuals who say that they, ah, okay, they want one thing and are one, and are one thing and end up so different. Right? Right? Doesn't that like, and sometimes it's a good thing. Sometimes it's it's a good thing for everybody that they figure that out. And other times I'm like, wait. <laughs> I, I like to believe that when somebody is different, like super different, that they didn't realize. That they like figured it out through this process. Because otherwise I would just be really sad <laughs> all the time with our couples. Um, so yeah, I like to see them growing through the process and sometimes it works in favor of their marriage, which I'm like, okay, that's fine. Um, 
And then other times I'm just slapped with the realization that people lie. Why? Why would you lie? Why would you lie about what you want? Why would you lie about who you are, especially in this situation? I've been watching since season one. So far, Nola season has been the one of the best seasons. I agree. What do you love about it? That's what I want to hear. What do you love about this season? I wonder if it's similar to what I like. <laughs> what do you like about this season, guys? If you're watching this uh, season of Married at First Sight, what do you like about it? Oh, okay, my eyes are open. See, um, I'm waking up, Just like seeing it happen as we speak. Uh, some of them don't know who they are. They're just, they just want to be married, but aware, not aware of what that means. How did you feel when the girl called you a, a bee? I think her name is Ashley Redhair. That's Elizabeth. Elizabeth, you have to go back and watch because... She didn't actually call me that. She sounded like she was. I mean, she used it in reference to me, but it was just kind of like her speaking very frankly and casually. I'm like, no, you don't speak to me like that. I'm the professional here. I'm here to help you. Let's not go there. I also wanted to call her out on that because I was like, you know what? This is my first season on this show. And yes, I'm relatively young, but I didn't want them to feel like, I didn't want anybody else to feel like they could talk to me like that. Nope, I don't like anybody to call me names or even just kind of speak that way to me in a professional setting. So I was like, no, just because I'm similarly close to your age doesn't mean we're going to be like friends like that. Just not going to happen. Not in this setting. After maybe. <laughs> But not right now. So, had to put my foot down. Uh, Amelia and Bennett. Who else is on the Amelia and Bennett bandwagon team right now? Agreed. You don't need to be a B to be a therapist. No, I'm not. Uh-uh. It's not what I'm going for. Oh, thanks guys. Who else are your favorite couples? Y'all are seriously helping me wake up. Oh, I just want to tell y'all that. I don't even know how long it's been, but I feel like I just had a boost of energy. So thank you. Yay, Karen and Miles. Yeah. What are your, um, what are the favorite activities that you've noticed from the show so far? There's just something about all the couples this season that feels good to watch, even if they aren't working out well together. Okay. So even if they aren't working out, it's still... It's still good to watch. Okay. I, I agree. Other than Amelia and Bennett, Woody and Imani are great, but I'm super interested in seeing Karen and Miles and their progression. Agreed. You know, it's funny because who was... I, I get screenshots sent to me about things from close friends and family and just kind of like, hey, this is what's happening. And somebody said something. Oh, somebody had said like um, that they're like, if they are, if somebody is slow to warm up to intimacy, they shouldn't be on the show. Like we need to screen for that. And 
And I was like, well, first of all, I absolutely ask people about that. Of course, you can't really know how you're gonna feel because you're meeting somebody, you know, a stranger. But then the other thing that I that um, I think a lot of people don't realize is that some people want that. Like some, I mean, we're matching people. So if somebody's like, oh, I'm, I tend to be slow to warm up, and somebody else is like, hey, I'm cool with somebody who's slow to warm up, or I kind of tend to be that way, then that's part of matching. It may not be great for TV, but remember, we're doing this for long-term matches, so want them to, uh, we want them to be okay with it. It's not like, I, I wouldn't necessarily marry these people. I mean, I'm not going to, but <laughs> I am married. Um, but I, just because I wouldn't necessarily be okay with certain things doesn't mean that they won't, they won't be a good match, so. We have to remember it's all about the match. It's all about the match. In Unfiltered, Henry seems so comfortable with himself. Yeah, I've noticed that too. Yeah, he's... Henry, Henry's... Henry is very, um... Very nice. Very nice guy. As you can probably tell. I don't know how you're able to talk to us and do your makeup. I need concentration. I do this so often. I do it so often that I I don't need as much concentration. Now, if I'm doing like a really like elaborate eyeliner or something, then yes, don't talk to me. But we're not doing that today. Um, since you guys are Christian, I don't know that we're Christian, actually. Oh, my alarm is going off. That's an old alarm. Um, no. I would say that that's probably a false statement that we are Christian um, across the board. Will you guys ever match an LGBTQ, an LGBT marrying pair? Um, well, I could probably speak for everyone on the panel that we're all open to all sorts of love um, and definitely would love to be able to try to represent all kinds of love on the show, but you know, it just depends on, on what's possible and the logistics of it. And, um, but it's certainly like, I don't get to decide what happens as far as how many couples there are, where we go. Um, you know, and it, it, it's not like there's creative things that I have nothing to do with. So, um, I think it would be great, but, you know, I also think that having older couples, I know we all would want older couples. I also think, um, that going to a, an island location would be great. So <laughs> my ideas of, of what would be great, um, you know, I, doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen, but a girl can dream, right? Hawaii, anyone? <laughs> Can we please do a season in Hawaii? I've never been. That would be awesome. But no, I don't get to decide that sort of thing. I think I'm going to do a ponytail today. I don't know. I bought one of those, um, those little things. Oh, I don't remember what they're called. o Anybody have Ponyo? But I don't know where it is, so maybe I didn't bring it. Um, yeah. Wouldn't that be amazing to, to have all sorts of different love, of course, although it's not like we could have every single type of, you know, dyad, triad, poly, all of that. Um, I mean, I can't say we couldn't. I'm just, my goodness, it's complicated enough as it is, right? That would be interesting. It would be nice to have all sorts of representation, but of course, you know, there are limitations to being able to do that. So. But I, I do not make that decision. I know Hawaii is part of the U.S., but it might be difficult to, to film um, over there. Agreed. Agreed. We need more representation. Agreed. We're always, 
we're always trying. Um, but one thing we won't sacrifice just for the sake of representation is good matches. Like we really want to continue to have good matches because that's what makes this worthwhile is, is having good matches. So we won't just match an LGBT, you know, couple just to have them, or we won't, you know, people are talking about interracial stuff and it's like, yes, <laughs> I'm in an interracial marriage. I get it. But, um, that doesn't mean we're just gonna put two people together. Like we need more, you know what? Instead of asking us to have more interracial couples, y'all need to encourage more people who are open to other races to apply for the show. Because the more people we get, the more likely we can, right? I mean, it's a numbers game. So I'm hoping Houston, who is casting right now, go to mathshouston.castingcrane.com. I'm hoping we will bring it and have all sorts of people and have all sorts of matches and it'll be exciting. That's what I'm hoping. Good matches make the show. Absolutely agree. And I want y'all to, to remember that we're always trying to make good matches. Even if they crash and burn, we're always trying to make good matches. So, excuse me. Um, yeah. NYC, I think it'd be so fun to go to New York. They started there. As you know, if you're a fan, they started, I think the first two seasons were in New York. Two or three, does anybody know where the first two or three seasons in New York? I remember watching the first season. I don't remember the second or third or fourth for that, but I don't, I didn't watch a lot of it to begin with, but, um, yeah, so I would love to go to NYC. I, I mean, the truth is I love traveling. So for me, anywhere is fun. <laughs> they could be like, what's like a really small place that doesn't have a lot of people or they could be like, let's go to Alaska, I'm like in. Let's go to Alaska. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Yeah, Jersey. Woohoo! Yeah. Okay, I have no idea what time it is. Alexa, what time is it? The time is 7.35 a.m. Oh. Hope you're having a good weekend, Viviana. Oh, thank you. I wonder if I woke up all of y'all's Alexas. I'm sorry. That's funny. I, I won't. I'll, I'll try not to do that again. Oh, third season was Atlanta. Really? That's cool. What, so was Cal, was Pastor Cal not on that season? Because he didn't start till four. Hmm. Yes. Um, my husband and I have kids. We have uh, two, a boy and a girl. Cleveland. Cleveland, Ohio. Yeah, I think that the, the main things, because of representation, the main things that casting looks for um, when they're choosing a city, or I don't know who chooses a city. I, I just said casting, but I actually don't know because I'm not sure about that. But... Um, is it needs to be big enough because as you notice, like in our New Orleans season, people start to like know each other and have met and stuff and they want diversity. So they want to be able to have people from all walks of life, um, uh, to choose from and, and we need a lot of numbers. So, cause when you start matching, it's like, it may start like huge, but then you really are trying to get to these five, you know. Did you like that? This is my visual for matching. <laughs> um, yes, we have had other, other religions besides Christian, but I have noticed that a lot of our applicants are Christian. Not all, and we've had all sorts, but 
Yeah, again, like it's like let's get people applying who who are different. Let's get all sorts of people. Good morning from Trinidad and Tobago. Oh, good morning. I hope you have a great day. All right. I need to do my hair. Okay. Yes, agreed, Becker 17. We get a lot of people who um, are either Christian or not spiritual. Yes. But I mean, I can't. I can't force people who are other religions to apply, but we can, hopefully they will. I don't know. Good morning from Boston. Hey, Boston. I love Boston. I've only been once, but I do love it. The truth is, I think I really, really love the Northeast because it's so different from Houston, where I live and where I'm from. I'm not gold anymore, see? I'm golden. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> bye, eHosie23. Thanks for waking up with me and helping me wake up. I appreciate it. So, yeah, I love the Northeast because I feel like it's just so different than Houston, where I'm from. And it feels like a different world. And I love the experience of traveling to places of, that are different than the daily life. I just wonder if they won't get, let's say, a Jewish couple because there's a pastor as one of the experts. Well, there's also a Jewish person as one of the experts, so I don't think it's that. Um, what about interracial couples? How does that work? Well, we've had interracial couples um, throughout the process, and we're always looking for couples that represent um, like real life, because you know, obviously interracial couples are in real life everywhere. But we need to encourage more people who are open to dating other races. I mean, let's say we have one person who's like, yeah, I will totally like, this is what I want. I, want, I say dating because they haven't been married. Um, but, We need to have, in order for those, we can't just say, oh, this person is, is uh, wanting to marry, uh, let's say a black person, and this person is wanting to marry a white person, and obviously talking about interracial stuff, that's not a good enough reason to match them. So we would need to have like lots and lots more people who feel that way in order to get a good match out of it. Does that make sense? dreaded bump and now we start over you had Tristan from Texas and people got mad at him for expressing his preference yeah I think I remember that that was before me but yeah I remember reading you know, that he had his own preferences, and then when people, when it was shared, he got a lot of backlash for it. Well, that's not good. I mean, we all have preferences, so um, I would hope that that wouldn't deter people from sharing them, but I get it. I mean, it is public. Oh, this is not okay. I know it doesn't look that bad in person, but look, this is not okay. Not TV worthy. Don't go there with Tristan. Okay, I don't know him, so I won't. Oh, <laughs> did you enjoy your fake birthday cake from the other day? Okay, that was funny. So, um, Cal and Wendy took me out to a restaurant here in Atlanta called Two Urban Licks, and it's on the Beltline, which is pretty cool here. And, <laughs> and the guy asked, like, it was just interesting because the guy asked a question that I don't know that you normally get asked. I mean, sometimes you do, but he was like, are y'all celebrating anything? Anything special? And 
And Wendy's like, yeah, we're celebrating Viv. And in my mind, that goes straight to, it's my birthday. So I was like, yeah, it's my birthday. Trying to go along with it. And she just looks at me like, what? <laughs> and I was like, okay. And so the guy's like, oh, all right. So we forgot about it. And as soon as he left, I was like, well, you said we were celebrating me. And she's like, I just meant that you're like here. It's like, oh. So then um, he brought out the cake, which was really sweet and nice. The guy was like super nice. They have amazing live music. I really enjoyed it. So no, yeah, it was definitely fake birthday. Okay, no bumps for now. But lots of flyaways, because that's just me. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. All right. Oh, I have a cool product that helps. Okay. So I bought this online. I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's W-E-I-C-H-A-I. It's one of those things from Instagram that comes up and you're like, hmm, does this really work? Yes, yes it does. Look. So it's like this clear gel on a like mascara wand. And it is for, it is like all, it makes your hair, I have an odd hairline, but whatever. It's genetic. <laughs> and look, it like pulls everything and keeps it. So I'll be doing that for the next couple of minutes because I have a lot of flyaways. But it's really good, y'all. Like it really works. It's like my hair is stuck right now. And then you can do the back. Um, let's see. Oh, yes. Have a great day, Becker17. Thanks for joining me. Um, no breakfast. I'm not hungry yet. Seems like Henry and Christina are a bad pairing. They seem so opposite. They do seem so opposite on, on camera and on TV, don't they? They do seem like an odd pairing. There now. Let's see. I'm a hard boiled egg kind of girl for breakfast. It's easy, it's quick. Okay. Now I need to do the whole disguise. the hair thing. My fa the favorite season for me that I've been a part of so far, oh my gosh, um, that's a tough one. Um, there were some great individuals and one couple that came out of BC um, gosh, I mean, all of them, all of the, all of the cities we've been in have had some amazing individuals. Um, I don't know. That's too tough. Um, New Orleans was great to film in because I, I love New Orleans I don't know yes I have a pet we have a miniature dachshund she's almost
almost four. Both my husband and I grew up with dachshunds, so as soon as we were able to get, like, if our, as soon as our kids were old enough to be able to help <laughs> take care of us, we got one. Okay. I need relationship guidance and would love to speak with either yourself or another therapist. How would I go about doing that? Great question! You can go to HoustonRelationshipTherapy.com or you can go to DrViviana.com or you can call, let's see, 1-800-913-9613-POST. Oh wait, oh, that's not the right one. How do I delete that? 800-913-9613. Oh gosh, whoever's number that is, they're going to be like, why are you calling? Don't call that number. This is the one. Let me put a star so people know. <laughs> Do not call that number, people. This is the one. And I think I can pin it, right? How do you pin it? Pin comment. There you go. No. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, not that one. So the one that I pinned is the right one. Anyway, I hope, what time is it? <laughs> Mute your phones because I'm about to ask Alexa, what time is it? The time is 7.49 a.m. Okay, I gotta go. Um, I hope you'll have a great day. Thank you so much for waking up with me. Like, look at this. I'm awake, I'm ready, just gotta get dressed. Thank you so much. I'm filming this morning, so I gotta get going. The website is HoustonRelationshipTherapy.com or my site uh, is DrViviana.com and I have some online programs there. You can ask questions there. Um, check it out. Okay. Have a great day, everybody. Have a wonderful Sunday. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And um, I will talk to you soon.